Tashana Mitchell joins me live on set. Uh, she is a psychologist. She's been practicing a couple of years now, and I'm happy she took the time to really not only share with the nation, but to ultimately to the end, we'll give her the opportunity to put her information out to offer her service to those right now really going through what I could only say is a living nightmare. And that development, Tashana, where so much of the country is up in arms with that particular development. Yes, I know people are asking for investigation and transparency in the said investigation, but there's the human impact. The actual lives that would have been impacted, the moms, the dads, the grannies, the uncles and aunties that will never get that opportunity to mold uh, the youngsters. Uh, I want to start by asking what would be the first approach? What, what, can, what can one even, um, you know, as it pertains to, 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 to starting that conversation? Um, just walk us through it. And again, uh, uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for, for, for the time and for coming on the program. Good morning. Good morning, Nishan. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so before we go into that, I just want to paint a picture to show you how deep or how complicated this type of grief is. Now, it is grief because it is a loss, but it's a more unique type of grief because if you look at it, when we grieve the loss of a loved one, is the grief of the past, so mm. past memories, past experiences. Mm. But when we have um, pregnancy loss, and pregnancy loss being the umbrella for stillbirth, miscarriages, and the loss of babies before 21 days, we actually grieve the loss of the future. And mm. when I say the future, it's the only thing that you have is the imagination or the expectation of your baby, yeah. of what your life could have been, the baby's yeah. life, the family's life. So it's a very, I would say, tenfold type of grief that we're dealing with. And a lot of times, just as with everything else, parents have to be ready to seek help. But in the interim, people around you can show support. And there are different ways in which we can show support, but ultimately support and stability is what these parents need right now. Yeah, support. And I would imagine that comes from, from family members, from everybody, I guess, needs to get on board. Yes. But what, what, does, what, what does a family member even say? Because in a scenario like that, some people don't even know what, what to say. Correct. Do you even have to say something or just you just have to show up? Great point. So that's the thing. A lot of persons feel like we have to give advice. I mean, it's cultural. But most cases, just being present with the parents, it goes a long way. Um, simple thing as, you know, taking dinner for the parents or taking the other kids away because, I mean, they need stability as well. Um, even just being present without saying a word, that comfort, that physical touch goes a long way. What if the parent really doesn't um, do, 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 don't want to see anybody at all? Uh, do we respect that boundary, respect that space? Yes. So you definitely don't want to um, pressure the parents because that can keep them in that state for a longer period of time. But you want to show that support that you are there. Um, you want to give examples of things that you can help with, whether it's around them or for them. So in the cases where they don't want to interact, you probably look at things that they may need. Let's just say they need grocery, things that the daily tasks that we have to do that seems like very difficult for them to do at this period of time, you can pick up the slack for that. Tashana, based on research and let's say case studies, uh, from your observation in your field, do parents even, so they've lost a child, I guess in this scenario, it's so heartbreaking, the grief is there, let's say they're able to ultimately work through it. Do they try, from your case studies, do people try again or they tell themselves, you know, it was too much to bear, not even going to make an attempt to have an next child? Yeah, so on some cases, they feel as though if they try quicker, it will help them to move forward easier. Um, in other cases, they are very much traumatized. Studies actually show that there has been difficulties in attachment to, from mother or parent to the child after you have a pregnancy loss. So really and truly, it's a case-by-case -case study. Mm. However, um, the key is to just take your time and get day by day. That is just the key for these types of cases, is not to figure out what next week is going to bring or the, the other month. It's really and truly what you need today and to get you through the other day. So most of us, we are looking at the developments via the news cycle, and we recognize that litigation seems to be uh, the, the next move for all the parents. Yes. Uh, granted, that will play itself out in the court, and hopefully the parents could be, uh, I mean, I, I don't think there could ever be a compensation financially for such grief and for such a loss. But is that something advised? Is it that 
people do the why do people go through the litigation really if indeed it can't really change the circumstance. Correct. What's the reason, really? Um, some cases, it's justice. Some cases, it's closure. Some cases, in, in these cases, a lot of the parents end up blaming themselves. Um, there's a lot of self-guilt and self-loathing. So it helps them to kind of reach that point where, OK, there's a cause. Our brains are wired for cause and effect. And if there's no cause or the cause is open-ended, then we are left in that emotional state for a long period of time without moving forward. And in lots of cases, we want to move forward. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So really and truly closure and ju just figuring out why did this happen to me? And that is the question that a lot of parents, why did this happen to me? Mm. You know, I guess it's it's again it's one it's one of those scenarios where even for yourself, um, I mean, you're a professional and you will ultimately will give some information out. But is it one where? I mean, obviously, I could imagine you'll have to remove yourself also from 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 scenarios so that you could give the best advice. But is this one, especially when we're dealing with? what could have been the future, you're not, as you said, you're not grieving the past, you're grieving the potential that could have been. Is it one that is even a bit challenging for, for professionals like yourself and your counterparts? Yes, of course. It is actually one of my friends, it's one of the parents. So for me, it took, it took a lot for me to take out myself, to bring myself into this, this place. And even as professionals, we have to know, we have to see the red flags in ourselves. We have to see the biases and we have to see when we need to seek help as well. And when we need to pull ourselves out of a situation and probably refer it. So in cases like this, we have to be very aware um, that not only we are not desensitized, but we are too sensitized. What you want to say to even parents right now, they're expecting in the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, they're looking at the development, they are traumatized, they are scared, they are nervous going into the system. Yes. Um, that could even be trauma for the parents who have not even gone through this scenario. Correct. What do you say to those parents looking on this morning? Well, I think these situations or these circumstances are unpredictable. Um, it could happen to anybody, but I do believe that there is strength in community, and this is what I think that we should start to create. We should go with a proactive rather than a reactive stance for these things. We need to have programs um, available. We need to have community available. So in the instances where these unfortunate circumstances do happen, we are equipped to provide services because I think that these parents, a lot of these parents, if not all, feel isolated because they are the only one who understand what is happening. Mm. Yeah, so I'm, I do think that stability and support is two major key factors that we have to always have in place in case of these things. For those looking on, if they want to probably uh, advance the conversation, uh, just uh, pick your brain, just you know, reach out if there's a particular concern, uh, how can they, they do that? Of course. So I actually want to... Um, suggest or put forward to the parents that we are going to have a support group where it's very difficult for parents to want to have that one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy right now but having community allows us to understand what we are feeling what we don't understand what we how we can move forward so we're going to have some group sessions it's going to be once a week at therapy me which is uh, my psychological firm. And we are inviting all, the, all of the parents of this unfortunate circumstance to come forth. Even if you can't, we have online. Mm. Um, because this is a very, some of these parents can't even get out of bed. So there's a strength really in community. Strength in community. Because it's, it's a shared trauma and you're, you're thinking that if probably people come together, there can be that sense of. Yes, so think about it as they're in the same ocean, different boots. So once you learn your ocean, you know how your boat works. Because not two, no two circumstances are the same. Yes, you all went through similar things, but you have a different experience. But mm. having shared experiences, hearing someone speak about how they feel makes you feel less isolated, makes you feel less mm. alone, makes you understand that we are not trying to make you move on, but trying to help you move forward and commemorate your baby as well. Uh, is there an uh, email? Uh, uh, uh uh, what, uh, something online or we could get? Yes, so you can get through to therapymett.com or on all social media platforms at therapymett. Yeah, Tashana, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for, for the time, for coming here live to really share with us and offer hope yes. and let people know that, you know, uh, professionals like yourself, your colleagues, they are willing and readily available to assist in this extremely tough time. Yes. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Let's uh, take that pause. We come back much more. 
after seven. 